Next, we have Pavaneshwar Prabhu here. He is monk uh, at Iskon Shri Shri Radha Gopinath Mandir again. He has studied Srimad Bhagavatam and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit systematically at Bhaktivedanta Vidyapeet, Govardhani Kovilaj. Uh, he holds a master's degree in electrical engineering from ISC. Uh, he graduated with honors as gold medalist and academic distinction, rarely achieved. He has worked for multinational companies like Ashok Leland, uh, Bosch uh, for years. He teaches Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhav courses in Bhaktivedanta Academy for Culture and Education, that is BASE. He has also developed a working 3D model of the universe. And uh, so we'll be waiting for Prabhu to give the presentation for today. Om Jnana Timiranda Sya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Milta Mena Tasmai Sri Guravin Nama Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Panda Hare Krishna. Good afternoon to all the assembled gathering here. After spending two long days, yesterday afternoon, today whole day, hearing from all the stalwarts, I feel myself as a nursery student. I am neither expert in Sanskrit nor expert in any Vedic literatures. So I request all of you to bear with me for the next 25 minutes. I will take you through basic elementary mathematics, which is as per my little understanding. So, my topic is planetary clock model based on Sursiddhanta. So, myself and one of my close friend, Vamshi Prabhu, both of us are working on this for many years. And why we have taken this work? What the reason behind? Just have one slide. So, Sursiddhanta and Siddhanta Shuramani, Grahaganta Dhyaya was translated and edited by Bhimala Prasad Siddhanta Saraswati. When he was a college school going student, that time only he compiled it translated into Bengali. As a result of his translation, he got the title Siddhanta Saraswati. So later on, one of uh, the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, his own Dhanush Gosai Maharaj, had a team of uh, professors, they translated into English. And this version of Suridanta has only translations. At the end of the 14th chapter, there are some example calculations. So Taking that as a base source, and also we refer to Suridanta with Sanskrit commentary, Gudartha Prakasha by Sri Ranganatha, along with Prakashika in the translation of Ram, Professor Ramachandra Pandey. Just to understand what Suridanta is talking about, taking reference on these two books, we are trying to understand verse by verse, chapter by chapter, in order to understand what Suridanta is explaining us. So, Prabhupada's his Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivinoda Shri Prabhupada says in one of the letters, he felt strongly that Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasatakura's version of Suridhanta would prove valuable for designing a Vedic planetarium of the universe for the upcoming Temple of Vedic Planetarium in Sridham Mayapur. So keeping that in our mind and focus, we are trying to understand Suridhanta based on our ability to understand. So, Suridhanta starts with Mangalacharan, offering obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth. And um, it says that, Maya, with a desire to understand, Akilam Jyotisham Gati Karanam, the astronomy of the planetary systems, incomplete, he performed severe austerities to please Surya Dev. And being pleased with his austerities, Surya said, since I have to do my seva of traveling around, I cannot speak to you. This is my amsha, madamsha purusho ayam. He expanded himself into second form and told that he will explain to you grahanam charitam, the complete history of the planetary motion, which depends on kala, kala ashram. So with that background, the Sursiddhanta itself indicates that the Amsha of Surya spoke Sursiddhanta to Maya based on his request, based on his desire to understand it. So now let us try to understand. Since the Grahanam Charitam depends upon Kala Ashraya, Sursiddhanta begins with the divisions of time. He talks about perceivable time, imperceivable time. 
and perceivable time starts with prana. Six pranas make one vinadi, six vinadis make one nadika, six nadikas make one sidereal day and night, nakshatram ahoratra. And then 30 such sidereal days and nights make one sidereal month, nakshatra masa. Similarly, one sunrise to next sunrise makes one savana day. That is what we experience, the civil day. And similarly, lunar month is 30 lunar titis. We have 30 titis. And solar month is one sankaranti to other sankaranti. Sun transiting from one zodiac sign to other zodiac sign. So, then he says that 12 such solar months make one solar year, which is said to be one full day. That is day and night for the devatas. So in these verses, he actually introduces us so many Kalamanas. We have Nakshatramana, Chandramana, Savanamana and Sauramana. And then if you continue further, further, the day and night for the devatas and the demons are opposite to each other. 360 celestial days and nights constitute one year for the devatas and asuras also. So then, one devata year is equal to 360 devata days. One devata day is equal to one saura vastara, our one year, one civil year. So with that calculations, 12,000 such celestial years make one chaturyuga, consisting of satya, treta, dvapara and kali. One chaturyuga is equal to 12,000 Devata years, which is equal to 4.32 million human years. So, of course, whatever we read through the four manas, according to them, how the variation is there, but we don't have to spend time on this. So then, as we continue further, he says, one Chetu Yuga consists of four Yugas. They are divided in at a ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4. Kali Yuga is 1 times, Dwapara 2, Treta 3, and Satya 4. And in each yuga, there are three divisions. <coughs> Sandhya Rupa, Yuga Rupa, Sandhyam Shurupa. One yuga time is divided into 12 parts. One part is Sandhya, morning Sandhya. One part is evening Sandhya. Ten parts, the middle. So with all these divisions, he further continues saying that 71 such Chaturyugas make one Manvantara. Every Manvantara followed by a Sandhi, which lasts for one Satya Yuga time period. So one Manvantara is equal to 71 Chaturyugas and one Sandhi which is equal to 0.4 Chaturyugas because Satya is about 4 times, remaining 3 are 3 to 1, total put together 10 times, so in that way. So then he says that in a day of Brahma, which we generally call as Kalpa, there are 14 such Manvantaras followed by 14 Sandhis and also one Sandhi at the beginning. So within a day of Brahma, there are 14 Manvantaras 14 plus 1, 15 Sandhis, all put together equal to 1000 Chaturyugas. 1000 Chaturyugas is equal to one day of Brahma, that is literal daytime of Brahma. Similarly, Lord Brahma also has a night equal to 1000 such Chaturyugas. This is one full day of Brahma, about 2000 Chaturyugas. Then, if it continues further, Brahma's one full day, 2000 Chaturyugas, one month into 30 times, one year, into 12 times, like that total life of Brahma is about 100 years, which is equal to 72 million Chaturyugas. As of now, Brahma already completed 50 years. Currently, 51st year, first day, sorry, 51st year, first month, first day is happening. So now, interesting thing, time of Surya Siddhanta's advent, when Surya's Amsha, is speaking Suridanta to Maya. That he clearly indicates in Suridanta. It says that starting from the beginning of the current day of Brahma, that is 51st year, first month, first day, six Manvantara periods with their respective transitions, Sandhis, have already completed. Within the seventh Manvantara period, 27 Chaturyugas out of 71 Chaturyugas, one Manvantara lasts for 71, out of which 27 already completed. And within the present 28th Chaturyuga, Krutha Yuga have just passed. That means, this is the one lifetime of Lord Brahma, about 50 years already completed. Currently, 51st year, first month, first day is going on. 
in which there are 14 Manvantaras, out of which 6 passed, 7th is running, in which there are 71 Chaturugas, out of which 27 passed, 27th is running, in which Satya completed, at the end of that, Surya's Amsha spoke, Surya Siddhanta to Maya. Afterwards, Treta completed, Dwapara completed, Kali started, currently, since Mesha Sankramanam, we are in 5, 1, 2, 3, year of the Kaliuga. This is the total time span that has been elapsed within the day of Brahma, in the, in the current day of Brahma. So, if you calculate from the beginning of Brahma's day, we have 6 Manvantara, 7, san, seven Sandhis, 7 Manvantara, 27 Chaturyugas, Kruta Yuga. The, the total number of years, Devata years and human years, when Suridanta was spoken, at the beginning of the current Kaliuga, and this year, 2022 Mesh Sankramanam, if you take. These are the number of Devata years, these are the solar years have, have been completed. Then, time for the creation of the 14 Lokas and their living entities. So, every day at the beginning, it is Lord Brahma's service that the lotus which springs out of the Garbhodakshaya Vishnu's navel, upon which Garbhodakshaya Vishnu expanding as Shyodakshaya Vishnu enters it, then immediately Brahma appears as an expansion of Yudhakshaya Vishnu on top of the lotus. He divides the 14 lokas, Chauda Bhuvan. Then he fills all the 14 lokas with different variety of living entities. Humans, subhumans and the superhumans. Including all the different Chara and Achara living entities. It says that from the beginning of the current day of Lord Brahma till the creation of the planets. That means indirectly 14 lokas. Constellations. Devatas, Asuras, and other moving and non-moving living entities by Lord Brahma, about 47,400 Devata years completed. Lord Brahma took this many years to create, to put everything into proper order. At the end of this, this year, the planets are into motion. They are put into motion. Since then, the planets are revolving around. That will be our starting point to calculate the motion of the planets. So this is the reference point for us. So here, in the previous slide, we showed what were the total number of years at the end of the Treta Yuga, Satya Yuga, then at the beginning of the current Kali Yuga, and this year. So subtracting this number from all the previous three numbers, we get three, three numbers. So for any calculation in this year, we can use this number as the base number. Or if you want to go back, subtract that many number of years. Accordingly, we can get... Oh, sorry, that, you remove that Tuvaji bottom. Oh, no. Oh, all right, Iskewaji, sorry, sorry. No, this um, Microsoft ka over it, na? Iskewaji, so over it. Yeah, Zoom is online going on. Sorry. So, this time, this time is equal to one Kurta Yuga Sandhi, three Chetri Yugas, one Kurta Yuga, half Trita Yuga. So, basically, the planets are put into motion during the middle of the fourth Treta Yuga. That was the time the planets had put into motion. And where they started, from which point in the zodiac they started. So that is mentioned as, on starting of Sunday at midnight in Lanka. So when the planets are beginning their motion in Lanka, which is on prime meridian, it was midnight. 12 night, 12 midnight. This is the first day of the second of a fourth. Okay, that is the same thing. Of the same woman on the bill. So, this is the starting point and we have total number of years also. Yes. We'll take questions at the end so that we can complete. So, now, that was all about Kala. Then he talks about Grahanam Gati Karanam. What is the reason for the Graha's motion? He says that the nakshatras and planets are moving continuously in the clockwise manner but the planets are always constantly surpassed by the fast moving nakshatras which are moving with greater velocity. Though all of them are moving in the clockwise direction, some are moving faster, some are moving a slower. So with respect to the fast moving nakshatras, the planets appear to be moving backward. That is the relative motion. On a daily basis, 
we have nakshatras and the planets having clockwise motion. But with respect to the nakshatras, the planets appear to move in the counterclockwise motion. For all the calculations in Siddhanta text, only this counterclockwise motion is considered, even for our astrological calculation, our predictions also. Since the planets and stars are moving in the forward motion in clockwise direction, starting from the east, one after the other with the different velocities, there is variation in their daily motion. Because of that, there is variation in the time spent by each planet in each zodiac sign. They seem to be moving from one zodiac sign to other zodiac sign. In Surya Siddhanta, the daily motion is referred as daily westward motion. That means Purva to Dakshina to Pachima. That is daily westward motion. So here, Purva is here. Purva, Dakshina and... And the relative motion is daily eastward motion. Because they are moving backward with respect to the starting point of the zodiac. That is eastward motion. Okay, that is in continuation. So then he defined the zodiac. So 60 vikalas make one kala, 60 kalas make one degree, and one amsha or one amsha, 30 degrees make one rashi, and 12 such rashis make one bagana. So everywhere he only calls bagana, bagana, bagana in the entire Susidanta. So bagana means 12 rashis with 30 degrees with subdivisions. So now, here is this base simile, simple simulation. So here we have the sun and moving along with the zodiac. The moon has a daughter line, it's constantly lying behind with respect to the nakshatras. So by the time they make one round, sun lags behind by approximately one degree, moon lags behind by 13 degrees. This is the relative motion for sun and moon. Of course, there are many more, but we just to explain the concept we have mentioned there. So now, Suridanta explains that the mean eastward revolutions of all the planets in a Chaturyuga are mentioned. When in a Chaturyuga, how many revolutions they make? These are the numbers for all the nine planets. The seven planets correspond to seven days plus Rahu and Ketu. And Nakshatras have the mean westward revolutions. That number is given. By subtracting the mean westward revolutions of Nakshatra from that, this number, the individual eastward revolutions, we get the westward revolutions of all the planets. Basically, this many times we see all these nine planets rising in the east, sitting in the west, within a Chaturuga. These are the numbers of mean eastward revolutions. These are the numbers of mean westward revolutions in one Chaturuga. And using these two, we have the number of risings of the sun. All our Kalamana is based on number of days in a year. With reference to that, by dividing the eastward revolutions of all the subsequent planets, we get total number of days required to complete the zodiac ones. Sun takes 365.2587 days. Similarly, Mercury, Venus also. The moon takes 27.321 days to complete one revolution across the zodiac. And other planets, Mars takes 1.8 years, Jupiter approximately 12 years, Saturn 30 years, Rahu 18 plus years. These are the number of years they take to complete the zodiac ones. The same information is given in Bhagavatam, but not with precision. Bhagavatam gives an indication. It approximately tells, sun takes one year, Mercury and Mercury and Venus follows like the sun, sometimes higher, sometimes behind. And Mars takes, one interesting information mentioned in the Bhagavatam, if not traveling in retrograde, Mars will complete one zodiac in 45 days. That's all. That means, if Mars is going through retrograde, it will take more time. Without retrograde, Mars will complete one and a half year. With retrograde, it becomes 1.8 years. And Jupiter 12 years, Saturn 30 years. They don't give, Bhagavatam does not give exact number. Because Bhagavatam purpose is different, Siddhanta's purpose is different. So in that way. No, no, it won't come. Don't disturb. So this is like the, the angular uh, difference over a period of time, like approximate values. Sun, Mercury, Venus, 1 degree. Some moon 13 degrees, Mars 2 23 degree, Jupiter 112 degree, Saturn 130 degree, Rahu and Ketu, they actually go ahead of Kala Chakra. All other planets are lying behind. But Rahu Ketu, they lead, they go ahead of. So these are the details mentioned in the Bhagavatam. So now again come back to Suridanta. So this is Grahabukti. Grahabukti basically one day how much angle they are 
behind. Bhagavatam, we have taken one degree approximately, but actually it is 0.9856 degrees. So in that way, exact values we can find out here. So now there is simulation. Here, this shows on a daily basis how all the planets are revolving around. Here we have Moon, Rahu and Ketu, and here we have Sun. Mercury and Venus are put in the same orbit because the speeds are same. Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. This is the daily motion of the planets moving in the clockwise direction. This is the top view as you see from the top. This is the front view as you see from the front. Here Earth is there, here Polestar is there. And this is how, these are the heights mentioned in the Bhagavatam accordingly we have put. This is the yearly motion. So in a 30 days period, while moon, moon completes one round and comes in front of the sun, sun goes from Mesha to Urushaba. In another 30 days, sun goes from Bushabha to Miduna, moon completes one more lunar month, another Amavasya. So like that, all the other plants also slowly following it. This is how we can see the yearly motion with respect to the zodiac. So then, this is the mean motion. Then Suryadhan says that, in addition to mean, there are other motions, such as Shigrocha, Mandocha and Pata. Their numbers are given. So basically, Shigrocha, Mandocha are other motions which actually either pull or push the mean motion of the planets. These forms draw the planets away from their position forward or backward using their left or right hand. So basically, Shigrocha and Mandocha water values are given. We can explain them with the help of the epicycles. So this is the mean orbit of the planet, this is the epicycle. When the planet is moving in the fourth and first quadrant, the speed increases and it goes ahead of the mean. When the planet is moving the second or third quadrant, the speed reduces, it becomes slower with respect to the mean. So like that. So we have mean plus Shikrocha and Mandocha. These are for horizontal motion. Pata will give you an idea of vertical motion. So they are regular motions. And these things we can explain through epicyclic model. So, and when we say cycle, there should be some radius, etc. So, Surjanta gives the paridhi. The Shigrakti Gatiruta paridhi and Mandagatiruta paridhi. So, these values vary, vary at the end of odd quadrants and even quadrants. For the for these five outer planets, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Jupiter, Venus and Saturn, these values are like this. These are like uh, Shigra values. And Manda will be there for all the seven planets. Sun and Moon does not have Shigra. Only Manda. So, this is the mean orbit upon which we have Shigra orbit, sorry, Manda orbit upon which Shigra orbit. So, adding these three, the motion varies. In the mean orbit, it is circular path. But with Manda and Shigra, it becomes different. So now, when Suryadanta is giving the Shigra Pardi and Manda Pardi values, what is the use of that? R Manda divided by R mean. Manda Pardi divided by Madhya Pardi. We have Manda Pardi value and we know the mean radius of the planet. When we know the mean radius of the planet, the mean Pardi should be taken at 360 degrees. That is one complete Ruttai 360 degrees. And Manda Pardi value is about 75 degrees for Mars. So how do we understand what is the radius of this Manda Pardi cycle? If this is 360, if this is 75, the ratio between the radius of this mean circle to the radius of Manda circle is Manda Paradi divided by Madhyama Paradi. So we'll get what will be the radius of this epicycle upon the mean circle. Because neither Bhagavatam nor Sudhyanta does not mention what is the radius of either the mean or the overall final radius of the planets. So we have to take the Manda Paradi at 360. We only get the ratio. If Mandapardi is, for example, for Sun, it is one astronomical unit, the Mandapardi is so and so, the Mandapardi cycle radius will be maybe whatever fraction. For example, just go back. So Sun, Mandapardi is about 14 degrees. So what will be the radius of the Mandapardi circle? One, 14 divided by one astronomical unit, or 360 degrees. So what will be the ratio? That into one astronomical unit, that will be the radius of the Mandapardi. So very simplistic calculation. So now, so here it says that since the planets are moving in the Mandapardi also, because planet will be starting from here going along with this 
epicycle because of which when mean is here because of the position in the mean epicycle the planet's true position will vary what will be the maximum deviation the maximum deviation will come when you draw a tangent to the epicycle so this is the maximum deviation which is equal to the radius of the epicycle so the maximum deviation due to manda maximum deviation due to shigra are these values when we combine both we get the resultant deviation for each and every planet with respect to the mean this is the final deviation so now how to incorporate these incorporate these deviations and then calculate the true position of the planets so that is the overall this is all background information till now so here we have epicycle this is the mean position of the planet and here is the mandocha position mandocha shigrocha position according to the mean position this is the mean angle but because of the epicycle the corrected position will be here so we have to calculate the corrected position of the planet simple geometry so it's like make a triangle here so we know that this is the ucha angle this is mean angle these two values we know and uh, subtracting this um, ucha minus mean will give you kendra this is like mean mean uh, radius if you extend further it becomes the basis and drawing a triangle here so by drawing this triangle we can find out this value and we can find out this value we know already this value so to find out this angle theta ucha phala it is very simple sin theta ucha phala is equal to this by hypotenuse so bhujajya divided by r plus cotija square plus bhujajya square so we have the sin value and sin inverse will give us the theta ucha phala adding this theta ucha phala to the mean we'll get the corrected position of the planet a simple basic mathematics so we have taken example if the ucha phala is in the first quadrant 0 to 90 degrees then the calculation will be like this we need to add the value because mean value is here since it is first quadrant it goes upward it goes ahead of the mean so we have to add that value if it is in the second quadrant also we have to add that value if it is in the fourth or third quadrants we have to subtract that value because it is lagging behind so then how to apply these four corrections based on shigra and manda surudanta says that for sun and moon there is only full manda phala correction but for the five remaining planets first we have to apply half shigra phala correction to the mean then apply half manda phala correction to the previous corrected value then apply based on the previous two corrections calculate the full manda phala correction apply to the mean value not to the previous one apply to the mean value then apply full shigra phala correction to the previous corrected value these are the four basic stages we need to employ so this is the mean position of the planets at the beginning of the current kaliyuga when kaliyuga started these are the positions of the planets the mean are all zero rahu is at 180 ketu is at zero remaining all they are all conjoining in the same line and shigra are also zero but manda we have some values so using all these values this is half uh, shigra phala correction because manda mean also zero shigra is also zero there is no correction everything is zero and then manda has some value because of which it goes here that is about uh, how much 10 degrees but we only have to apply half manda phala so half of that is 5 degrees use this as a base value for the next correction from here to here is 5 degrees there draw a full manda phala circle and then apply manda phala correction then the manda phala correction comes to 10 degrees so add this manda phala to the mean mean is at zero so total becomes 10 degrees so upon this 10 degrees draw a shigra phala circle and shigra phala is zero since it is here so mean is here corrected mean is here but since shigra phala is here the final value will become here this is the fourth corrected value so we have these four corrections and the resultant corrected value is this one finally we got it is a mean value that 0 degrees but corrected value that 6.4 degrees so for all the remaining planets these are the values these are the corrections these are the final values these are in mean values are 0 0 0 0 but final values are here there is lot of difference so these are the corrected values of the planets position 
at the beginning of the current Kali Yuga. There are two ways to see. One is either you project the value on the mean orbit only, take all the corrections on the mean, mean orbit only. Second thing is use the epicycle as it is. Don't project on the mean, mean orbit. Just use the epicycle. So this is projecting on the mean orbit. All the planets are positioned on the mean orbit only. This is the epicycle. If you use epicycles, it will be like this. So now let us see. With Shigra correction, now the planet's orbit varies. They are the Shigra circles of Sun is acting like the mean for Mercury and Venus. Mercury and Venus are moving around Sun. And uh, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, they have main circles upon which there is epicycle, Shigra epicycle. And Rahu are Ketu inside and there is Moon's orbit here. So they are moving like this. And so this is the Manda cycle. So with Man Manda, since the name itself is very slow, it does not move so much in the epicycle. It is very slow in, within the epicycle. But Shigra was made one co complete round along with the sun. So after one complete round of, I have taken for two years, because Mars is 1.8 years, this is two years. This is Manda orbit. With Manda and Shigra both combined together, the overall MSXL. Ah, yes, everything is in MSXL. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll show you that. I'll show you that. It, it comes here. See, this is the mean orbit of the Mars. This is Manda orbit. This is Manda plus Shigra orbit. The, finally, the orbit becomes like this. This is the reason none of the Puranas never stayed the radius of the planet. Every day it is varying. It is not fixed at all. So, today it is here. Tomorrow year, tomorrow year, tomorrow day after tomorrow year. After one year, it becomes very close. Mars comes to very close to Earth once in every two years. Or approximately. So it keeps varying every day. None of the Puranas ever mention the radius of the uh, orbits of the planets. Even Suridhanta also does not mention. Many, trans many commentators, the details given 12th chapter, they consider them as the radius of the orbits, but they are not radius. They are derived with respect to Akash Kaksha, which will give the angular movement of each and every planet over a day of Brahma. They, they may indicate the radius or Paradi but they are not actually radius values. Because the radius is not fixed, we cannot fix the radius. Orbit is like this. So none of the Vedic texts does not give any radius value. They only indicate the motion. This is Mars. This is Manda, only Shigra. Manda comes Shigra, final orbit. This is for Jupiter. Jupiter orbit becomes like this. It has 12 times completing the retrograde motion. And Saturn, 30 times completing the retrograde motion. And uh, in, inside two planets, this is Venus. So Venus orbit, Chikra is like this. Venus overall becomes like this. This is Mercury. Three times it does. And Sun and Moon only have Manda. This is Sun's Manda. This is Moon's Manda. Rahu and Ketu does not have. So they are simply having their own motion. This is like overall picture. So that was the simulation which we made for making the planetary clock model. Now let us see one example. This is a very interesting example. Uh, calculating the Ahargana for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance day. So, how much time? I am I'm done with my time. I'll just quickly take one minute. I'll not take much time. So, one interesting procedure is given, into, given in Suridhanta to calculate the Aharganas. The solar days we cannot depend upon. Every lunar month has fixed 30 tithis. Solar days, they vary here and there. Our calendar days, one month, 31 days, one month, 30 days, here and there, we don't know, February 28, 29, who remembers? It says that, in whichever year, for example, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in 1486 AD, February 18th. Calculate number of years, completed till 1485 AD, Mesh Sankramanam, April, whatever. So these are the total number of years, that time. From that day, Mesh Sankramanam, calculate number of tithis passed, till the time of, Mahaprabhu's appearance day. Because moon tithis does not change. They are fixed. So for that, we should know what is the tithi and the mesh sankramanam. So that we can calculate. So convert the number of solar days into number of lunar days from the beginning of the creation. From the beginning, the time planets are put into motion. Then divide by 30, take the remainder, multiply it 30, you get 13.3. That means 14th tithi. Chaitra Shukla Chaturdashi that was. And mesh sankranti in 1485 AD, it was Chaitra Shukla Chaturdashi. It is coming 13.3. Now, I have to calculate next year also. 
1486 AD Mesh Sankramanam. It is coming 24.4. If the Tithi is above 20, that year will have Adhikamas. Because the Mesha has only 10 days left. Lunar year is 355 days. Solar year 365 days. There is a 10 days difference. If the starting Tithi and the Mesh Sankramanam is falling from 20 to 30, that year definitely will have Adhikamas. So we need to account that. But this year only at 33, no Adhikamas. We can happily calculate. So now, from Mesh Sankraman to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Purnima, 331 lunar thesis completed. Convert that into solar days, 326 solar days. Add this value to the previous days. We'll get the total number of solar days. But here we have not taken truncated value. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared evening 6 p.m. That, that, that was the time also lunar eclipse. So, so what, have, what we have done? I have truncated to previous day evening. 30.142 means it might be like 12, 20 minutes something, midnight 12. So previous evening is 29.75. Previous day, evening time, 0.75, 6 p.m. So that day is Saturday. We can find out the DT of the day, it is Saturday. So these are the positions of the corrections, positions of the planet, the final values of the, all the positions. This is the birth chart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. See here, sun is here, sun is setting, moon is here, moon is rising, here Rahu is there, Ketu is there. Ketu is causing lunar eclipse. So this is another with epicycles and all. So these are the values given by Sri La Bhakti Vinod Tagore in uh, Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Uh, this is the position of the planets as per these calculations. We have the Rashi number, we have Nakshatra number. And this is as per Bhakti Vinod Tagore's birth chart. He has calculated the birth chart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has given it is given in Chaitanya Charita Amrita. If you compare this and the previous one, there is no difference in any number. Angle way there may be some difference. Because our calculations are some approximate calculations. We are not doing exact, because I also don't know completely. But all the Rashis, all the Nakshatras are exactly matching. So then, for uh, last Saturday, what happened to Srila Prabhupada's disappearance day, 45th disappearance day. For that day also, calculated, this is like this. So here, two differences we could see. Here, Dhanishta and Swati. Shravana and Vishaka, except these two remaining all are exactly matching. Thoda border mein hai, isli, they are different. So finally, I am closing with today, abhi, 6 o'clock. I know it is 6.30, but maybe half an hour back. This is the position of the planets. And uh, last week we had solar eclipse. See here is sun, here is moon, here is Ketu. It was partial eclipse, it was not full eclipse. That was evening 6 p.m. Next week we are going to have lunar eclipse. 6 p.m. again. Here is moon, here is Rahu, that is full eclipse. Because full, full block, Rahu is fully blocking the moon. In the previous one, Ketu is only blocking half the sun, half the moon. So there was only half eclipse. So like this, we can uh, calculate uh, anything from the beginning of, the planets are put into create motion. Yeah. Very nice, very nice, uh, wonderful. Uh, I just want uh, that, you know, with your data, can you match the observatory data, that the modern data that we have? Uh, for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I have taken reference from Bhaktivinoda Tagur. For Prabhupada Disciples Day, I have taken from uh, Astro Sage. No, no, uh, I am saying the modern astronomical data. No. no. Yeah. Right. Eh? No, we are using Suya Siddhanta parameters which are... Yeah. This, this will not match. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I will go to. Ah. Those parameters... We, we can just update the parameters and it will match. Yeah. Yeah. Someone yeah. has to yeah. just do that job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this has been extensively studied, you know. The comparison between the modern data and the... What are the calculations from the various Siddhanta? A yeah. lot of people have studied it, you know. Bharat yeah. Indra, etc. have studied. Myself and Ram Subramanian studied about 30 years back, you know. Right, right. So there will be some difference. A few degrees difference will be there. Okay. In uh, eclipses also a few degrees, uh, a few minutes, uh, sometimes one or two hours of a difference may be there. So that is because the sidereal year and all that are not exact here. Okay. So there will be some differences. 
and one more remark I wanted to make. I mean, see this uh, the Manda Kigra correction. Actually, it is Manda correction is nothing but the correction due to eccentricity. We know that the planets move around elliptic orbit around the sun, and the moon moves in elliptic orbit around the earth. See? So that is a, just an eccentricity correction, but uh, a simplified form. Sir, here you can have the values. Right. These are solid yeah, values, yeah, yeah. and these are the modern values. Yeah, yeah. Both are more or less. And similarly, the Shigra correction, which is mostly not no, no, noted by most people, it essentially converts the uh, coordinates, you know, the uh, movement around the sun, the heliocentric coordinates of the planet to the geocentric coordinates. Yes, sir. That can be shown. Interrelation between geocentric to heliocentric. Yeah, exactly. So, based so. on the Manda Shigra ratio, that yeah. mean orbit, mean Pardi, and Manda Pardi, Shigra Pardi. When we take the ratio, so these are the values from Surjanta. For Sun, it is 1 and 1. For Mars, it becomes 5 and 5. Taking the mean value. Even the Manda varying from minimum to maximum, I take the mean value. It is 1.4, 1.52, 0.36, 0.39, 5.07, 5.2, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 
it is everything what we discussed in the book. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. No, I give this as an assignment to my IIT students. Generally, I only give the Manda Samskara as the assignment. I don't give the Shigra Samskara. So, but this is fabulous work. Okay. Thank you, sir. I, uh, regarding the beginning of your presentation, you were telling us about the Surya Siddhanta, and uh, there are two numbers that impressed me. One is the age, uh, the actual age of Brahma, yes. 51 years. It's almost like my age. <laughs> <laughs> But this is, is this corresponding is uh, fascinatingly corresponding to the actual age of the sun in giga years of uh, of human years, and the time for formation of the planets is impressively similar to the time of formation of the solar disk and the planets in modern uh, astronomy. You know, it's not uh, formation of planets in modern astronomy is not so clearly stated, and you know there are many theories. But 10 to 50 million years for the formation of the planets is is there. So it's I calculated 17 million years for your numbers. Something fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, here. Moon mission and Mars mission. Uh, if it can be. Uh, I, 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 Hi. How Brahma's day um, gets uh, so much faster compared to the, um, the Manushya day and the Devata's day because Devata's day is in the Mero uh, uh, six months uh, a day. But how Brahma's day is calculated? But when the sun or uh, other things they don't. Uh, have any for um, the jurisdiction with the Brahmaloka. How Brahma's one day is calculated? Uh, actually, I have, in one simulation was there, I did not go there. Mm. Uh, Boloka, all over the moon, yes. all of us have 12 hours night, 12 hours day. Yes. And you go a little bit above, at the level of Boloka, where the moon is situated, 15 days is there, daytime for them, 15 days is nighttime for them. Okay. If you go a little bit above, in Sargaloka, our six months is their day time, our six months is their night time. And uh, we were hearing about the nakshatras, everything, etc. Okay. Uh, so, till the Roloka, the things are moving. Above the Roloka, Maharloka, Jaraloka, Tapaloka, Satyaloka, they don't move, they are fixed. All these four Lokas have their day time is equal to the day of Brahma. At the end of the day of Brahma, the 14 planet systems are destroyed, all the living entities up to Brahma, they enter into the body of Garbhodaksha Vishnu. They take rest for the entire night and next day morning, again the lotus comes, again Lord Brahma appears, again he divides into 14 planetary systems, again he creates everything. This is a cyclic process that goes on for the entire lifetime of Brahma for 100 years. That is okay. I am not asking about how Brahman, how one day of Brahman is calculated. How? Because uh, our day and uh, our days and uh, Devata's days are calculated about the... Uh, Based on some movement. Sun's movement, but when the sun has no jurisdiction, no, it, it no does not, it does not uh, um, shine there. Sun is only for three locas. Yes. Then how how also. Brahman day is calculated? They are self sufficient planets. Hmm? They don't need sunlight. They are self sufficient. Hmm. Mahar loka, Jal loka, Tapa loka, Satra they are self luminous. Hmm. They don't need sunlight. So they, then they, there is only day, there is only night. Huh? In that day they are there, night they are taking rest in the Garbhodaksha Vishnu's uh, abdomen. No, no, how did you arrive at that number is the question. He didn't arrive. That's no, no, it is stated in Bhagavatam. It is stated in Bhagavatam. No, no, no. We don't have to calculate it. It is there in uh, 15th uh, the 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Yes, yes, yes. Sahasra is the very end of the Sahasra. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. There must be some basis of the day and night there. That's what I thought. Because Brahma Loka and Brahma Loka, it is always there. No, no, no. In, in that, it is says one day of Sahasra Dipya Kalpa. No, that is okay. Yeah. But how it is day and it is night? Why is it called a day? That oh, that question, okay. Ah, that's the principle. Uh -huh. The creation? other day in relation to sunlight. Uh -huh. So there is no issue of sunlight. Why is it called a day? And uh, one more. Uh, sir, can I, can I, this is my understanding is, Brahma creates early in the morning, the creation is maintained by Kyodakeshan throughout the day, in the evening, Lord Shiva destroys. 
As long as the creation is in action, the universe is in action, that's the data of Brahma. As long as Brahma and other living entities are taking rest within the Abhraman and Garuda Chavishnu, that is their night time. That is the understanding of second and third kind of system of Bhagavatam. Where the creation subject matter is discussed, Sarga and Visarga. Siddhartha Shilohan, Kaiva, Idam Diya. It is the time for which creation is existing, that is the day time. The time for which there is annihilation and progress, that is the night time. And this Brahma Murtha, what is the fraction of a second in Brahma's time? We say Brahma Murtha. We know that you can just debate that. I think we are getting late. Thank you very much for this opportunity. So, I think one of the most scholarly presentations that we have had uh, through these two days and um, tremendous work and understanding has gone into it, a lot of detailing has gone into it to make the point. Um, so, it was amazing work that uh, Parmesha Prabhu presented here. Um, I'm sure there will be some questions which will be unanswered, but definitely the uh, discussion can continue. Uh, post this too, personally with uh, Prabhuji.